Welcome to The Funnel. My name is John Shea. I'm the president of Alignment Group. This is episode 179 of The Funnel, 20 Mistakes Sales Managers Make When Hiring Sales Reps, Part 1. That's a mouthful. (laughs) I couldn't fit all 20 in a single podcast episode. It would be way too long and be like an hour long. So we're going to cut it into two parts. Again, this is part one. So here's what you will learn. You will learn the first 10. Number one, not tough enough. Two, fill the empty territory. Three, industry experience. Four, hire off referral. Five, poor quality interview. Six, fooled by the candidate. Seven, not prepared. Eight, fail to involve others. Nine, don't seek proof. Ten, talk more than listen. Let's jump right in. Not tough enough. So this is what happens. Sales managers fail to ask the really difficult, tough questions. They focus on the mundane stuff, like work history, experience, and their performance in their previous job. They really don't ask the difficult questions like, hey, how about the gap in your resume? Or they're uncomfortable digging deeper into the resume and challenging what they've written or even challenging the candidate in the conversation. They're going to face prospects every day. They should be challenged and they should be challenged in the interview. However, oftentimes managers just aren't strong enough to ask the difficult questions. So that begs the question for me, are they good enough to be a manager or is it just training? I don't know. But I think you definitely see this as a mistake made in the interview process. Next, fill the empty territory. So here's what happens. Sales managers are busy. Generally, they're all running around with their hair on fire, dealing with crisis after crisis, either from the reps or from somebody inside the office or a customer. And they don't have a lot of time. So in their mind, they just need to race through this process to fill the gap. So I call it speed hiring. They have an empty territory. They need to replace the rep, et cetera, et cetera. And they move through the process and ignore what I consider pretty obvious red flags. So what they're focusing on is the things they like about the candidate, and they're completely neglecting the obvious red flags or shortcomings because they're in such a hurry to fill the territory. They're literally blinded by the need to fill it. So this leads to hiring the wrong rep, and then there's buyer's remorse, right? They hire the wrong person. They make a mistake. Six months from now, that person's being replaced, or a year from now, or at some point, if it happens over and over again, the manager's being replaced. Next, industry experience. I see this a lot. There's there's like this tunnel vision that sales managers have or business owners with industry experience. Unless you are very highly technical and require specific skill sets, It's unnecessary. You don't have to do that. There's many, many, many sales reps out there that are capable of moving within industries, from one industry to the next. And what's the benefit of that? Well, you don't have somebody's baggage that they're bringing with them. We did it this way. This is how we did it in our old job. This is what happens here. This is why we can't sell to these people because of this. You see, they're bringing all their baggage to the table, and you're having to deal with that in addition to whatever other problems you have with it. So... I'm saying give people outside the industry a chance. Don't make the mistake of putting that tunnel vision on. People outside of your industry will give you new perspectives, better perspectives in some cases. So they might bring something to the table you never thought of before. It happens all the time. So open yourself up to outside people for the job in your company. Sales role. Next, they hire off a referral. I've seen this a ton. Somebody they know and they trust, a colleague, a friend, a family member, recommends a sales rep, and they're blinded by that. They hire off of that. They only see the good. They don't, they don't want to dig deeper. Or maybe they don't see it because, well, so-and-so really liked them, and I'm going to like them too, and that's going to be the end of that. Maybe it was a mentor. They're blinded by a perceived obligation to move forward. And there is no obligation. 
Now, should you be looking for referrals? Absolutely. But you have to go into referrals with an open mind. I've had this family members come to me and say, hey, someone says looking for a job. You mind if I send them over to you? And I tell them right up front, yes, that'd be great. And I ask, I ask friends and family and I ask people, do you know anybody who's looking for sales? I have, a, I have a, an opportunity. It's okay. But I'm very upfront about the process and it, there's no guarantees. And it's not about the person. Sometimes it's right job, right fit, right profile, et cetera, et cetera. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to solve problems here. We're trying to find the right people. So don't get hung up on feeling obligated to hire a referral. Next is a poor quality interview. This happens a lot. Sales managers, they don't know how to interview. So they conduct these really poor quality interviews. And in, in, all, in many cases, they haven't really been taught how to interview. There's been no formal training within their company, no formal training in their history. So they're, they're, they're doing these interviews that are basic. It, in many cases, it's just not their fault. They don't, they've, they've never learned. They have no support system in place. No one sat them down and said, this is how you interview. This is the process for interview. And this is how I'm going to teach you. Most mirror their boss or somebody that hired them along their career. And they liked the way they were hired. And they figure, hey, I'm a manager. It must have worked for me. So I'm just going to do that. It does a number of things. One, if you're dealing with younger people, millennials, it completely turns them off to sales because people know when they're being hired by a poor quality interviewer, even if they get the job and they take it, they know that that interview was pretty bad. And oftentimes you make a mistake in hiring the wrong person because you didn't interview properly. Head on over to alignment-group.com backslash the funnel. Click on episode 179 at the bottom of the page. Free trial candidate assessment. Again, click on that, fill out the information. You'll get a link to provide a potential candidate the objective management group assessment. And I'm going to take it one step further. Email me, and I give my contact information at the end of the podcast. It's also on the website. And we'll schedule a time for me to go over the assessment with you. I can help you through that, maybe discuss what you're looking for, give you some pointers. We'll spend a little time on the on the phone or go to meeting, and I'll go through page by page, and we'll talk about it. If I can help you, I'll be more than happy to do so. Check out the free trial candidate assessment. Okay, the next one is they're fooled by the candidate, right? Some people are really good interviewers. They interview well. Now, I have a story. I interviewed poorly once. Years and years ago, right out of college, I went for a job interview, and I had the flu. I was thrown up in the parking lot. I went in for the interview, and I bombed it. I called the company back, and I begged for another opportunity, and the job was already filled. However, they had another manager in another division looking for someone, and they'd be more than happy to bring me back in, given the circumstances. And I went back in, and I got the job. <laughs> I don't know what that has to do with good interviewing, but I thought it was a great story. I was a good interviewer. I'm not sure I had all the skill sets at the time to do the job, but I was interviewed by pretty poor managers from an interviewing perspective. I've had some good managers in my career, but <clears throat> some pretty poor managers that didn't know a good sales rep from a bad one because they hadn't been taught how to interview. So there are people out there that do very well in interviews. That doesn't mean they're a good salesperson. I hear that all the time. And I say this to marketing people. How many of you, when I'm in a room full of marketing people, have been offered a sales job? They all raise their hands. Why? Because they're very good in those conversations. For whatever reason, marketing, very social, right? I know I'm throwing a blanket over that, but most that I've met are very personable, very social, can sit and have a really strong conversation. So many salespeople have that ability. That's what fools people into thinking they're good salespeople. Well, they could sell ice cubes to Eskimo or ice cream to Eskimo, whatever, that's, whatever that saying is. It's ridiculous. Just because you make a good first impression and you can have a good conversation doesn't mean you're going to be a good sales rep. This leads to the sales manager just feeling good about them. Hey, they gave me a first impression. I like them. A good first impression and I like them. Just because you like them doesn't mean they're going to be a good sales rep. Put that aside. 
and focus on what's really important. Can they perform in the role that you have outlined? Can they succeed at your company? That's the question you should be asking yourself. Do they have what it takes? Now, I've been through podcasts where I go through the six-step sales hiring process, talk about the assessment, et cetera, et cetera. If you've been listening to the podcast, you know all that it takes to be successful in hiring salespeople. So don't be fooled by the first impression. Happens a lot with managers. Next is the unprepared manager. They're just not prepared. Remember how I said they were busy and they end up, you know, um, speed hiring, going through the process and hiring people as fast as they can because they have so much on their plate. They're so busy. But same here. They're too busy to prepare for the interview. So they don't. They're looking over the resume or the paperwork before they walk in to talk to somebody. In some cases, they haven't even seen the results of the assessment or they haven't done a pre-interview. They haven't done anything. They haven't said, yes, I like this resume. Let's, let's give this person an assessment. They just leave it up to somebody else. So they're sitting in front of them looking at their resume and pretending that they're important. Really? That's unprepared as far as I'm concerned. The, the, what, what good preparation means is reviewing all this before, identifying the gaps, determining the questions to ask, taking notes, looking at the assessment, writing down all that stuff. It takes work to prepare for an interview. If you don't have a process in place, you lack process, you're not going to be prepared for the interview. And the busy manager makes that mistake. And then they fall back on things like first impressions, good interviewers, et cetera, et cetera. That's where the problem starts. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about your next hire. Next, they fail to involve others. I have been guilty of this in the past. Okay? It's always good to get a second opinion. If you don't get a second opinion and you interview sales reps, sometimes you don't get that different perspective. Really good sales managers are open to that. They're open to getting a second opinion. They're open to get those different perspectives and getting valuable feedback. And then taking all that feedback, looking at all the things that they've done and say, okay, can I make a decision here? Plus or minus, thumbs up, thumbs down. It's that simple. Seek those second opinions. Fail, failing to include others puts you in a bad position. Okay, you're not looking for consensus here. You're looking for feedback. That's a different, a whole different model. Next, they don't seek proof. So what does that mean, they don't seek proof? Well, they take things for face value. They don't look for, for verification of what's on the resume. They're just going along for the ride. Oh, yeah, yeah, you did that? Great. Okay? You, you said you did this? Sure. Not how did you do it? How will you do it when you're here? Be specific. They, they take the vague sort of gray comments and let it go. Where I come from, you peel back the layers and you, you're seeking proof. Written proof, if it's available, and verbal proof. If they've done something, they've built a program, they can tell you in great detail how they built the program. If they can't give you details, they can't answer your questions in detail, red flag. But if you don't seek it, they're not going to offer it. And again, you put yourself in a position where you're hiring off of first impressions, et cetera, et cetera. So keep that in mind and to not make that mistake. Next, they talk more than they listen. And this is number 10 of the 20. They talk too much. Hello, it's not about you. You have to give the applicant, the, the sales rep, an opportunity to speak. Oftentimes, managers sell the job way too early. How great the company is out. What a cool team. We have, uh, you know, we have a kitchen with candy and ice cream and breakfast and a foosball table. Now, I'm joking around here. But I would stick to the 80-20 rule. 
Let them talk 80% of the time. You talk 20% of the time. I ask a question. You answer it. My question should be 10 seconds or less or 15 seconds. Your response should be two to three minutes. That's what I'm thinking. And if I'm not getting that out of them, then I'm going to layer my questions until I get the answers I'm looking for. I want to hear them, not myself. And for those of us in sales that are managers that have big egos, it's really hard because we like to hear ourselves talk. I get it. I'm in the same boat. But it's imperative that you let them talk. The more they talk, the more information they're going to give you. You give them enough time, they're going to tell you everything you need to know. I had somebody tell me that a long time ago when I first started in sales, a senior rep. You listen long enough, people will tell you everything you need to know. And I believe that. I believe that in prospects and I believe that in sales candidates. So don't talk too much. Let them talk. Subscribe to The Funnel. Head on over to alignment-group.com backslash The Funnel. You can subscribe there. We're also on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio. Feel free to stop by or download any one of those apps and find us and subscribe. Head on over to iTunes. Give us some feedback if you feel compelled to do so. Or you can stop by the website. I'm on Facebook, facebook.com backslash alignment group. Twitter, at Shea John R. I'm on LinkedIn, Google+. You can reach me, Jay Shea, at alignment-group.com. My website is alignment-group.com. Thank you for subscribing. And until next time, keep filling the funnel.